Hi guys! So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ali Kitaguchi and I am a content creator for a gaming group called Achievement Hunter. Um, I don't work for them, but I make gaming compilations based on their content. Um, I also use a little bit of Rooster Teeth's content as well. Um, I'm a video editor, basically is what I do. This is the software that I use, and in this video that you're watching, I'm going to be showing you basic editing tips that I have for people who are maybe trying to get into editing or maybe trying to improve their editing as well as special things that I do like tracking shots and stuff like that. I am also going to be showing you a complete behind the scenes of my most recent video as of the day I'm filming this which is Achievement Hunter Gavin versus Slow Mo Guys Gavin. So um, I'm going to basically in this video walk you through the entire process of how I made it. If you have any questions about editing, please feel free to leave them below. I'm not the best editor in the world, but I do have a degree in it, so I might be able to answer some of your questions, and if not, I will definitely look into them to try and figure them out for you. Also, I forgot to mention, this video that you're watching is my celebration video because I just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is super, super cool. Um, I never really thought that that would happen when I made my first video, which was Ryan Haywood, Ryan Haywood's weirdest skills. When I first made that video, I expected nothing to happen. And I think within like the first week and a half, like the first nine days, that video had gotten like 23,000 views and it was like the second most viewed video on my channel. And I was like, wow, this is great. Like, this is so cool. And then like, Three days later, I had like 200,000 views, and I think like almost two months ago that video passed a million views, which is unbelievable. Like, it's completely insane. So, as long as people keep watching videos that I'm making, I will keep making them because it is the most fun I've had in a long time, and it's really great to do something during the quarantine. Yeah, so in this video, like I said, walking you through my process, how I made this video right here, and I'm also going to be showing you uh, different uh, tools that you can use in Premiere Pro, how to edit, what to do, the whole bada bang. So without further ado, let's start at day one. Hey guys, so this is gonna be day one of editing Achievement Hunter Gavin versus Slow Mo Guys Gavin. So first things first, um, I keep all of my footage on a hard drive. This is my hard drive. It's a terabyte, which is very big. <laughs> um, so I use a terabyte to store all my footage because any video that I make ranges from, I think the lowest was like 33 videos and this one has 53. So right here, this is my hard drive. Basically what I'm gonna do is just open it up and show you guys what I have in here. So these are my Achievement Hunter projects and I name them by when they were made. So the first one was my weird skills, Ryan Haywood's weird skills. So it's a number one, all the way down to number eight, which is age Gavin versus slow-mo guys Gavin. These are screenshots that I've taken that I'm thinking of potentially using as thumbnails, but I'll get into thumbnails at the end of the video because I don't make my thumbnail until after I finish the video and until it's uploading, but I'll get to that later. So then I have secondary footage, which is empty. Basically the secondary footage is anything that's not one of the primary videos that I'm using. So if I have any sound effects or any like text or anything that I wanna put in. But the first thing we have to do is make a Premiere Pro project. So I use Premiere Pro, this is it down here. There's a couple different softwares that you can use. What I use Premiere Pro is considered industry standard. It's what I was trained in when I went to university. So this is Adobe Premiere Pro, this is what's loading. So this is what I'm going to use to make my videos. I also have used in the past Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro X, which is what I was originally trained in when I was in high school. So now that Premiere Pro is opened up, this is what it looks like. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is come over to new project and it's gonna open on the side for some reason. So here is what your new project looks like. If you've never used Premiere Pro before, it's gonna look really confusing. And even for me, I've been making videos and doing video production for about eight years now, and it still confuses me sometimes. So up here at the top, we're gonna title it. So I'm just gonna title it Gavin because I know that I have not made another video about Gavin yet. So I know that this is my only one. The location, this is basically where it's going to save to. So I'm gonna save it to my hard drive. So I'll put it on my hard drive, Achievement Hunter Projects, H versus Slow Mo Guys Gavin, and just save it there. <clears throat> and the next thing that I have to do is check my scratch disks. Now scratch disks are basically where your auto saves are gonna save to, and those take up a ton of space. So 
usually it saves to your documents folder on your computer. Also, I'm using a Mac, by the way. This might be different on PC, but I don't know because I'm not using a PC. But on my Mac, it saves to my documents folder. And for a long time when I was editing, I didn't know that that's where it was saving to. I just, it was like out in the void and I didn't think anything of it. So I have everything set to save to my desktop. So captured video, captured audio, video previews, all of that stuff. All of this is going to go to my desktop. And they popped up right there. So this is Premiere Pro. Welcome to Premiere Pro. So here are your four modules, if you will. If you want to think of it as like, uh, keep talking and nobody explodes, this is kind of what it's like. So this is what's considered your preview. This is your program. This is your project bin. And this is your timeline. So the timeline is, if you've ever seen any of my community posts, I often post updates of my timeline, which is that rainbow thing that you'll see. We're going to build that. So that's what's going to go here. This is where all of your footage goes. This is your project bin. So I'm going to import all of these videos <laughs> from H, Ga uh, H Gavin versus Slow Guys Gavin. So I'm just going to click on them, shift click, which auto selects all of them if you didn't know that, and hit import. So on Premiere Pro, when you're importing, you can either go up to the top where it says file, and then there's a section that says import, then you can select where you want to import from, or you can just hit command I. So after I do this, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create folders so that I can keep everything organized. So the folders that I always create are videos that have already been used. So it'll say used footage and outro because I always have an outro that I do at the end of all of my videos. And then I also have a secondary footage folder that I create just in the off chance that I end up using secondary footage, but there's no guarantee that I will. So all of my footage is in now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create those bins. There is a little tiny button all the way down here at the bottom that says new bin. Basically, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make my used footage, which I spelled wrong. So there's one. I'm going to make one for outro and then I'm going to make one for secondary footage. Okay, so now that those are in, Here's the next part. This is the part that gets tricky. Now I have to decide how I want to lay everything out. So usually when I make a compilation, there's no rhyme or reason. There's not usually any sort of layout, but there has been in the past for certain videos. And I'll explain. So for my video that I did on TTT, I did 69 minutes of Gmod murder and TTT. I only used five Gmod clips in that, like five Gmod murders, I should say, but I use like, 45 or something TTTs. So what I did is like every fifth or sixth TTT, there was a GMOD, so everything was spaced out. So there sometimes is a rhyme or reason, but I usually don't decide that until after I've made the video. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start pulling footage and dropping it into my timeline. First, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna show you the preview versus the program. So this is the preview. Basically what this is, is I've just selected a clip and put it in. So it's showing me that because this video is highlighted, it's also going to show it to me up here. But when I drag it in here, it drops into my program because program is what you're looking at and preview is what you have selected. So they could be different. So for instance, what I'll do is I'll click on this video. Oh, okay. Which is super bunny man. So now my preview and my program are different because what I have in here is not what I'm looking at basically. Now that I have something in here, I'm going to show you the basics of how I edit stuff like this. The first thing that you have to do before you do anything, well, at least in my head is I title my videos. So up here at the top, you have all of these different choices. It says learning, assembling, editing, color, effects, audio, graphics, libraries, and then another editing. The other editing at the end is my personal workspace that I created for myself because these sizes and these shapes of the different boxes and stuff is how I like it. This is how I like to work. But like, for instance, the effects panel looks completely different and here it's going to shift right now. So it opens up an effects toolbar in the side. Now, what I always use is video effects. I go down to video and then there's something called a simple text. You drag it on and it brings you this default text. Now, this is what I always use to title the videos. And the reason that I do this is because when I started becoming a fan of Achievement Hunter and I started watching compilations, the number one thing that I always questioned was, oh my God, what video is that from? And I never wanted someone who was watching my videos to have to ask me that. So. I just put it on my videos for everyone. So everyone can always tell what video it is and no one has to worry about that. And I also link them in the description. So, so this is VFX. Oh, okay. I'm not typing VFX artists react to bad and great 
CGI. Oops, CGI. 26. So then the next thing that I do is it automatically centers it to the center of your video, which is really nice. The only thing is that a lot of the times, especially in Achievement Hunter videos, there's stuff that's happening in the lower middle third. So what I do is I just move everything over to the left because that is the place they are least likely to put a webcam. So I try to put everything over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to here to my position. So this is my simple text right here. Come over here, move the position, and I'm just gonna slide it over. And I don't have a set that I use, like a preset number. I basically just eyeball it. So I always move everything over and then I hop back over into my editing panel just so everything shrinks again and I have more space. The next thing that I do, these are bars down here. So this is video one. So the video is split in two. So you have your video track and your audio track. I always expand both, even though the video track doesn't really show you anything, but it's just makes it easier to focus. But I always expand my audio track because one thing that I always do is make sure that my audio is concise. So I'm also going to label this, which means I'm going to color code it. It's thinking, hello, oh, maybe I have to control click because I'm on a Mac mouse. So there's an option called label. This is currently the color iris. I'm going to make it rose, which turns it red. So this is where the color coding of my timeline starts to come in. So the next video that I make will be colored mango, which is an orange and then yellow and then like green and stuff like that, but you'll see that. So now basically I'm ready to edit this. What I'm gonna do first though, is come back down into my preview or my project, I should say. And I'm going to trim this so I can figure out which one's which. Okay, so this is my sequence. So your sequence is basically whatever it is that you're working on in your timeline. I rename it because it always takes the name of the original video that you put in your timeline. So if you have two videos, like it'll, it'll show up as two different videos in your program and it just looks a little weird. So I always just rename it sequence. Then I come back up and I find the original clip, which is the VFX. I just type it into my search bar because it's easier to find. I take it, slide it into my used footage. Now I have one item in my used footage bin, X that out, and now all my videos are back in here. And now I'm ready to edit again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what's called scrubbing, which is when you take your, basically like your command head and start sliding through the video just to see where everything is. And I know that they're going to start reacting right about here. So I'm just going to trim that right there, slide it back over. And I know that they'll stop reacting over here somewhere. So I'll trim that. So that's a quick cut. Basically what I just did is I just cut the video to the portion that I wanted. So the original video was 14 minutes long. I now have what is three minutes and 31 seconds long, according to my timeline. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it. Oh, that bullet! See, it impact his cloth. I love, I love the lighting from the... Okay, so Ren and them are talking right now about the shot that they're looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on my timeline so that I can see everything a little bit easier. And what you're going to see on your program is basically that it makes it a lot easier to see your audio. So if you've never seen an audio like waveform before, basically this is what it looks like. If you zoom in even further, you can get more of it. What he just said there is, can you human operate this? I think that's a great start. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit C, which is a shorthand command that you can use. I think it might be different on PCs, but on Mac you can use C, which is cut, which gives you a razor blade tool. I'm gonna cut it right there and right there, it just cut my video. I'm gonna hit V, which is gonna take me back to my pointer, which is my selection tool and I'm gonna click this and just delete it and get rid of it. So I'm gonna zoom back out, slide, oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> slide this back over to zero and start there. Can you human operate this? You know Gavin actually worked on this movie, right? So now this is how the video starts. You mean Gavin from yeah. the guillotine channel? Thanks again to Gavin for chatting with us. You can check out his very pop- Okay, so because he's going into promotional stuff there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right before that. And so this is where those audio keys really come in. So right here is the natural taper to what Ren is talking about. So what I'm gonna do is just slide right in here, hit my C button, cut, click, edit, and done. So now the video ends like this. I'm making this a full package. So now it tapers out. And so now what you can do is move on to the next video. So the next video on here is Jeff's biggest losses. So something that I didn't quite expand on, but I probably should. The reason it's important to add your title of your video first, if you are going to do it the way that I do it, is because that if you don't and you start cutting your clips before you add it, you have to manually add the title 
to every single individual cut that you just made. So if you notice the way that this is showing up is there's a ton of black space here. Basically what it means is when I downloaded the video, it downloaded at like a different scale size, but there is a simple hack for this. You just click it and scale to frame size and it will make it big. <laughs> so sometimes you have to do that too. Take my little simple text, add it on. Jeff's biggest losses, GTA 5 hunting pack. Yeah. Well, it is part two. Hunting pack remix part two. It's Jeff's biggest losses. Okay, so that's another thing. You just saw me debating how long to make the title. I always try to make the titles fit on the screen with like a little space because sometimes when, sometimes the titles are way too fucking long. But one thing that I do try to do is make sure that if you type what you see into the search bar of YouTube, you'll be able to find it. And if you type in Jeff's biggest losses, you'll be able to find this video. You don't even have to state that it's GTA 5 or that it's Hunting Pack. I got lucky with the first video that I picked, which was the VFX video, because I knew that the clip that I wanted was the very first clip that they talked about, so I didn't have to search for it. I will show you now that this video is significantly longer because it's 40 minutes probably. So here is another trick that I do. Another thing, this is all part of my pre-planning what I'm about to show you. This is my notes folder. I keep this on my computer. This is my AH videos to make. So these are videos that I am planning to make someday. Here's my Jack video that everyone keeps asking me for. Gavin being good at games, which is something that I hope to make in the future. Best of the Swapper and Jester, which might be my most requested video besides best of the zombies. I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to those because there's not that much content for them, but we'll see. I make no promises, but I want you guys to know that I am trying to find footage for them and I'm going through them. And every time I see something that I think will fit, like best snipes, this is just best of sniper shots in any game that I find. So anytime I'm watching a game, which I'm really into Rainbow Six right now, anytime I find a really good snipe shot where I'm like, damn, that was a good shot, I just mark it down. So this is something that I do. So I kind of label my notes folder too. So this is all my GTA 5 stuff right here. So nonstop bikes, Scavenging, getting mugged, hunting pack. Uh, if I win, do I get the discount? And I didn't save the timestamp. That was what I was trying to show you guys is that I timestamp everything. So let me just look at this first Fibbage. So for Fibbage, which is like literally called Let's Play Fibbage, it's the first time they ever played Fibbage, the Jackbox game. I marked 8.30 because at eight minutes and 30 seconds into the video, Gavin does some dumb shit. 1308-2530. So that's kind of how I find moments. I vaguely know where this moment is that I'm talking about. So I'm going to do my best to find it. So because I haven't found it yet, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go to the video and find it. So someone will have had it marked in the comments somewhere. Who is Jeff, by the way? Jeff is a defender. This is it. So wait, if, if I win... This is it. Okay, so 24, 24. That's where it is. Okay. A little bit easier to find now. So my timeline, here's 25 minutes. So it should be right over here somewhere. So I'm going to trim this bit and slide it back. So what I just had to do was because I didn't have it time stamped because I thought I knew where it was, and I did not. I had the right video, but I didn't have the right moment. I had to go to YouTube and find where it was time stamped. So someone said it was at 24, which was right. So this is it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this in right there. So basically the reason I just shortened that is because I know that it happens in between these two moments. Why, hello, okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna slide this back and just take a look and see where I can start it. Jeremy's asking, you know, you know, should we reset? And Jeff is saying, no, 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 let's just keep playing because he has a pretty much guaranteed win. So I'm gonna start it right there. So that way you have a little bit of context, which is another thing that I try to do in my videos is make sure that any person who ends up on my channel, ends up watching a video, has context for the reasons why I've included it, which confused a lot of people last time in my most recent video, which I believe was Achievement Hunter deceiving each other. A lot of people were really confused as to why it started with a like between the games where they were dusting Jeremy and they were like, well, why did you show that first clip of him getting the powder paint on him? I was like, I don't know. It just kind of made sense to show what they have been doing and why Jeremy's covered in paint. So I don't know. It's just something that I do is I try to show context. So the next thing that I'm going to do is because I just cut the audio there, I have to decide if that's where I actually want this clip to start. So what I do is I always connect it to the video before and play it through to see how it sounds and how it makes sense. How much work and preparation and post effects that go into making this a full package. Thank you, sir. See like that? Pretty smooth. Can't really hear any audio cuts or audio blips. So I'm going to call it 
good to go. So now that I've kind of been gotten into the groove of things, this is gonna go by pretty quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use most of this. I'm just gonna use the portion that I want. Normally, if this was just like a funny moments video, I would use probably the whole portion of the age animated, but because this is specifically about Gavin, I'm just gonna go to the part where the Yeti beats the shit out of him. I got a little bunny rabbit. Okay, so that's gonna be the part that I take is right there. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I stack shit. So here we go. Let's see. So I'm going to expand my second audio channel. Okay, or not. Hello, if my mouse would like to work, please. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to push this up because I actually don't need to see the video tracks. I just need to see the audio tracks because the audio is the most important. Slide back over here. Oh, dear. I heard him. I heard him. Okay. So Gavin doesn't start choking until right in here somewhere. The beast. Hold my flare gun. Where is he? Where is he? I got a little bunny rabbit. Okay. So I almost nailed that completely. Um, I'm going to show you my hack. Basically, you just line them up so just let's a little bit so i have my lock on um this is something that you don't have to turn on i'm going to turn mine off just for this so i can slide it a little bit easier so now these should sync up almost perfectly so now it sounds really weird because they're synced up um so this is how I do most of these AH animateds, is I sync them up like this. Before I do anything else though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale the video. Because like I was talking about earlier, if you don't scale it or add your text first, you have to do it manually. And I know that because I've made that mistake several times. <laughs> so I'm gonna scale this first. Hop into my controls panel, and I think I usually scale it to 40, I think is what I usually do. Yeah, that looks about right. And so then, I literally just slide it over until the edge of it is snug and then move it up. That's going to move it down. Oops. Move it up. Okay. So now that I've got the age animated up in the corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to maximize my panel group so I can see it just so I can see if it actually does fit in the corners and it looks like it does. So I should be good. I'm going to restore my panel size. So now what you can see here, is that the audio no longer syncs up because the creator of these, like the age animated has decided that he doesn't want to include the rest of it. So he cut it and then used another segment. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to sync mine up. So that's Jeremy. I'm going to slide back. I use the, the arrow keypad on my laptop just to slide back. I'm basically going frame by frame. So right there is the last time you see that. I'm going to cut that right there. And this is a different section of the video. So let's see. So the rest of the age animated is no longer important because I have already taken a section I want. I'm just gonna delete the rest of it. Another thing that you can do is unlink. Basically that means that your audio and your um, video track are no longer synced up. So I could move this all over the place if I wanted to, and I'm going to, and I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm going to group these two clips together. Um, basically what a grouping is, it now means that they will move together. So if I move one, I move the other. Whereas if I hadn't done that, if I were to move this, I would have to resync everything. And yes, I have done that before too. So I'm not gonna make that mistake again. I have learned my lesson. Look at the big brain on Allie. Okay, so lock that back over. The lock key that I mentioned earlier is useful for when you're sliding clips because it automatically will auto lock to the next video. It's not really that important. It's just a convenience type thing. So another thing that I have to do sometimes when I'm doing these AH animated videos is sometimes I can add markers. I don't usually cause they fucking clog up my timeline and I don't like them. All you have to do is hit the M key and it adds a marker. This is a marker right here. And I can label this if I want to. So I can say, um, Yeti bit my back and put it in there, hit okay. And I can put another marker here and say, Yeti didn't bite my back. Well, unless it's black old, but you know what I mean. Um, but I can go to like previous or next or specific markers. So if there's a certain moment in your video that you wanna hop to, you can put a marker there and then just go to your marker manager or whatever and just hop to and from points. Um, so that is definitely something that you can do. I'm going to clear all markers because I don't need them and I'm not currently using them at the moment. All right, so I just went and ate dinner, put a cardigan on because it's cold in my basement, 
And so as you can see, I've gotten a little bit more progress done. So this is what your timeline should look like now. Um, I've gone ahead and color corded everything so that it's a little bit easier to read. And so the reason that I didn't show you all of these steps is for a few reasons. One of them is that I've basically covered as much as I think that I could in terms of like standard video editing tips. So I taught you guys how to cut videos, how to merge them together. I'm going to show you a tool that I really like to use. It's called the ripple tool. So I am going to, I'm going to take this video, just any video. And I'm going to come back to this one later. So I'm not going to worry about doing my normal stuff. So there is a special tool called the ripple tool, which is right here. Ripple edit. You can also hit B to automatically bring it up. Basically what this does is it means that if you have a cut already made in your video or in your timeline or in your sequence, wherever it is, you can take it and just drag it and it will automatically mush everything back together. So that may not seem like it makes a whole lot of sense, maybe in the way that I'm explaining it, but as opposed to a normal cut tool, when you cut, you then have to delete it. It doesn't automatically lock everything back into place, but the ripple edit tool does. So it'll say, okay, so this is, you know, the portion that we're starting with. I want to cut to here. It will automatically lock everything back in place and put it back together. So that's a really great tool to use. So something that I wanted to show you guys is something that I do when I make my videos is I add little bits of personal flair and I think I've done it in every single video and sometimes people catch it and people don't so i know for instance a lot of people caught moments in the most recent video that i did the h deceiving each other where jeremy would say like oh i never lie and i put in a little text that said yes you do you lie all the time or jeremy would say like i love lying lying's my favorite part and i put in like we know jeremy and like things like that and people seem to really like those those are just little tiny things that i put in there just for me because i know that a lot of people don't actually sit and watch the video they put it on in the background while they do other things which is totally fine i do that too so I add little tiny things in there for people who are actually watching. So if you're wondering if I've hidden something that you may have never caught, you should check out the videos because I think there's something in every one. I think one of my favorite moments that I ever did was the Waluigi video. Yeah, so this is an example of something that I put in that you would have only noticed if you were actually watching the video. Um, I spent way too long making this because no one will know this, but these colors are those colors. I used the eyedropper tool to make them instead of just picking a yellow and picking a purple. And some of, I've found too that what happens a lot is sometimes people think that like these moments that I've included, like, like the Waluigi thing, people think those are from the original videos and they are not. <laughs> those are all me. So um, it's just something fun that I like to do. So I have a moment in this new video, in this Gavin video that I really want to do where Gavin is looking haggard on the ground over here. And uh, I'm going to do a quick zoom. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So just that moment right there, something that's pretty funny to me. So I'm going to cut around the video and I'm going to show you why. So, okay. So the reason that I just cut where I did is because for the most part, the camera is stationary, meaning it's not wobbling around a whole lot. So I don't have to track anything, which if you don't know what tracking is, tracking is basically when you're kind of like following a subject, even though it's moving throughout the frame and it looks really cool. And a lot of stuff like Achievement Hunter does it a couple, like they don't do it that often, but they do it every once in a while. But like, it takes a lot of time to do that. So it's a lot easier to do it on something like this, which is stationary. So like, if you look at the frame, the camera doesn't change that much. It does like a quick zoom, like they do their own zoom, but I'm going to do another one on top. So here is how you do this. You take your clip and once you click on it, highlight it, hop over here into your preview menu where your effects control panel is. Then there is a FX, which is effects. Uh, called motion and that's where we're gonna be so we're gonna scale it and then we're going to Position it so what I just did I clicked on these two little nodules right here Which turns on your keyframes, so I am going to add keyframes to this so My here so these are also keyframes that I just added right here now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in really far up a little bit so I'm adjusting the X and Y coordinates of the video Y as always is your up and down X is your left to right so I'm adjusting those 
and then should do a zoom. So that's kind of what I wanted. So now I'm just gonna adjust it to how I need it. So let's see. Put this over. I'm gonna move this up a little bit so Gav's in frame because they do zoom in on him. So now what I'm going to do is because this is kind of where I want the last keyframe for this one to be, I am going to trim the video inwards and then pull this video outwards so that they sync up better. Oh, it looks like you're coming in. Just like that. So I'm going to keep adjusting this until I get it the way that I want it to be. Oh, so I like a quick zoom. So what the quick zoom is, is when you pull these closer. So if you've noticed in a lot of the TTT videos that I edit, what I'll do is I'll cut to the face cam really quick. Basically what you do is if you shorten the space in between your two keyframes, like by making them closer like they are right now, it'll make the zoom quicker. Whereas opposed to if they're pulled back and further apart, it's basically saying that the keyframes on the far left are like your A and B points and the keyframes on your, your right are your Y and Z, let's say. And to get from point A to point B, or I'm sorry, point A to point Z, however much space in between there is how much time you have. So if you have one keyframe here and one keyframe here, it's going to take the entire length of this to make sure that they get from this section to this section. But if they're shorter, they only have this amount of time, so they go much faster. So I usually put my keyframes really close so that the zoom is really quick because I just think that a quicker zoom is funnier in my opinion. Like that, that dumb type of shit makes me laugh. So I always do something like that. So I'm going to leave it like that for right now. Maybe I'll come back to it and adjust it later. But as of right now, I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to group all these clips together like I did earlier with one of the other, with the uh, Yeti bit my back in that one, uh, just so that they all stay together so that when I click on them, they all move. Usually if I have a video where I'm cutting in between it multiple times and like, so this is just one segment, this is one segment, this is one segment. But because this one is now three separate segments, I'm going to group them together so that if on the off chance that I do move them, which I probably will be doing later, um, they don't get affected as much. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to fix one of my most common problems that I run into and something that as a viewer bothers me a lot that I see in other people's content. So I have two clips here back to back. And now what I'm doing is I am zooming in further so I can expand my timeline, look at my audio, see these two, how they connect. And then I'm going to play them through and let me know if you catch what I caught. Did you see it? Probably not because I am on crack. So I saw it. So here I'm going to show you what I saw that right there. So this minuscule, literally one frame piece I can see and it bothers the hell out of me. So one thing that's really important for me when I edit is to make sure that you don't see shit like this. I don't ever want to see this when I'm watching something because it drives me bonkers. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to take my ripple tool and I'm going to slide this over one and just for a good measure, I'm going to slide this back too, because Gavin's not doing anything here. Go back to my playthrough. Okay. Well, it's kind of short. Now you don't see it anymore. I have fixed it. It's really that simple. Um, it's just another thing that I do just to make sure that everything is neat and orderly is I zoom in super far and make sure that everything looks okay. <sighs> okay, so that concludes day one of editing. It is currently 1035, which means I've been at this for just about six hours now. I started around 430. So pretty happy with the progress I've made. I have successfully started my timeline. I've got mm, uh, three sets done. So my sets being from red to red basically on my timeline. So I've done one, two, actually I can look at my used footage folder and tell you how many videos I've used. I've used 25 items. I have 35 left. So I've made some decent headway on today. I'm hoping tomorrow I can get some more done. So for right now, this is what I've done. So 
Really, it doesn't take too long to edit. I mean, yeah, six hours for someone is probably a long time to be sitting here doing this, but for me, it flew by. I stopped and had dinner for a little bit, so, you know, I was still able to edit 25 clips in the span of six hours, so, while also simultaneously filming a second video, which is this one right here. So, I'm uh, pretty happy with that. I think tomorrow I will mostly finish up. I'm not sure if I'll actually finish the rough edit. This is called a rough edit, by the way. I'm not sure if I'll actually finish the rough edit tomorrow, but I am suspecting that I'll get almost all the way there. So we'll see. It just depends on what time I decide to start filming tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys. So this is day two of editing. I'm going to get back to the video now. I am going to power through some of this stuff, see how much more I can get done. And then uh, maybe I'll do a check-in. It's currently 6.30, so maybe in about an hour, maybe hour and a half or something, I'll let you guys know how much I've done. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So what I'm doing right now is because I'm getting down to the last like 20 videos or so, um, I'm starting to notice that like certain things go together. So for instance, I have two different videos. One is from Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes and one is from uh, Ready, Set, Show video where Jeremy references the Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. So I have those clips back to back because I know that they're supposed to go together. So I have a Slow Mo Guys video here where Gavin is with another YouTube content creator called Linus who is helping him build a new storage system for all of his Slow Mo Guys footage. And Linus keeps swearing and Gavin keeps having to bleep it because his channel doesn't really, they don't really do a ton of swearing. I mean, they do, but not that much. And I'm going to juxtapose it with a Achievement Hunter video where Gavin, which Gavin doesn't really swear all that much because his grandparents watch his videos, but Gavin is swearing a lot in the Jenga the movie. So this is kind of, uh, maybe a trick that people who are looking to get into editing, uh, this is something that you might want to check out, is how to make everything flow together. There's a certain pacing that follows really long videos like the ones that I make. So in order to make sure that no one's getting tired of seeing the same thing over, you kind of space everything out. So here what I'm doing is I'm showing two contrasting clips which adds humor to it and it also slows down your pacing. So you're going from a clip where there's not really a lot of swearing, there's just a lot of beeping, and it's funny because you know that Gavin's not really like that, and then I'm gonna show you why Gavin's not like that. It's kind of um, the back and forth, the dichotomy, if you will, of the two different pieces. I'm putting them together. It is currently 8.14, so I've been working for another two hours. Um, I have made some decent progress. Um, I'm down to 24 videos left. This is what my timeline currently looks like. I've gotten to the point though where I'm hitting videos where I'm having to decide if I actually want to use them or not. So I've actually gotten rid of like at least two today. I think I got rid of one yesterday as well. So I'm down again, I think to like 54, 53 videos that I'm going to be using for this one, which is really good. And I might still cut more out. It just depends on what I end up finding. So I have 24 videos, it looks like left in my bin to get through and i'm gonna work i guess for another two hours or so to see how many more i can get through um so maybe i'll do another check-in around 10 uh to let you guys know uh how much further i'm gonna make it okay so it is just after 10 it is 10:02, and i have just finished putting in one of the last videos so at the current moment in time, on the end of day two, I have one, two, three, four videos left to add. Um, I have added 49 items to my timeline. So I have 49 videos currently sitting on the timeline. This is my timeline right here. It's almost done. Um, so tomorrow when I come back in, I am going to finish up very quickly the last couple videos. I'll add all of them in. Then I'll hop back on and talk to you guys and let you guys know what I'm going to do because tomorrow we're going to be um, basically shuffling all of these around, finding an order that we like, and then we will start the fine cuts, um, which means I am going to be watching the video through several times, trimming everything, fixing everything, make sure, uh, make sure, making sure that the audio sounds good, making sure that everything fits. Um, and then we'll be wrapping up because uh, we'll be finishing up. So I've already added a few personal touches into the video. I've added some quick zooms and stuff, but tomorrow I'm more than likely going to be adding text overlays, like little captions and stuff, things that I find funny. I'll find more places to add zooms and uh, we'll be uh, well on our way. So I would say right now we're 
49% done. We're almost done. We're, well, we're not almost done. We're almost halfway done. So um, I will check in with you guys tomorrow. So um, I just finished answering some questions. It is now 6.12. I also had a little bit of food because I haven't eaten yet today. I have, I think like four or five videos left to get through. To, yeah, I have four videos left. So I'm gonna really quickly go in and add those and then I'll hop back in because then we're gonna get to the fun stuff, which is rearranging, finding a rhythm for everything, putting everything together. And then we get to do special edits, which are gonna be quick cuts, zooms, adding text, stuff like that. Things that are comedy based in general. Yeah, so I'm gonna go finish editing this up and then I will be back to chat. Okay, so I am officially done with the rough edit. It is currently 7.05. I finished about 20 minutes ago. Um, had to wait for my dad to leave, but we're done. So I'm officially done with the rough edit. The rough edit is currently, hold on. Okay, now I can do it. Okay, the rough edit is currently one hour and 12 minutes long, which is not bad. It's fairly short for me considering a lot of my recent videos have been two hours long but it is uh done so now we get to move into the fun stuff okay so now that we're done with the rough edit the next stage is called fine cuts and this is basically fixing up everything that you may have missed the first time so there are a few different stages on how to edit the first is the rough edit which is what i've just finished which is basically just compiling all your footage putting it into your timeline so now what we're going to do is we're going to reorganize everything so if you'll remember on day one when i started editing i pretty much said that there was no rhyme or reason we could just take a random video just pop it in just so we could get started now that we have all of the footage in, everything's chopped up into clips. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna start moving things around. I try to take what I perceive to be the funniest clips and put them at the end so that people get like a nice surprise when they make it to the end of the video. You know, save the best for last or whatever. But I also try to find something that's pretty funny to put at the front. It's called a hook. You use it in writing as well. You have a hook to hook your audience into staying to watch the rest of the video. So I have a couple ideas of things that might be a good hook. Yesterday, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this, but one thing that I do when I edit is I put two clips back to back to show the juxtaposition between each. So in this case, one might be a video of Gavin doing something extremely well, doing something very good, and then immediately it's followed by a clip of him failing miserably. That's a juxtaposition, is showing the dichotomy between point A and point B. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe find a point in the video or even find just one clip first to start where maybe Gavin does something really well, does something really cool, immediately followed by a separate clip of him doing something kind of dumb. Gavin did a video with a guy called Linus. I have two of their videos together because they did one for Gavin's channel, one for Linus's channel. Gavin is basically trying to headshot a guy running across the screen and they're testing his reaction time. I also have a video of Gavin from a GTA where he gets like three headshots in a row. So I might put those two back to back to show Gavin actually failing in Linus's video but doing really well in an Achievement Hunter video. So I might do that. So let's, let's do that. Let's start there. So now that we have those two clips up at the front, I think I'm gonna make that our opener. So I'm gonna leave these as is for right now, but once I get the rest of the timeline sorted, I'm gonna come back and fix this opening clip right here because I'm going to change this opening frame, but I'm gonna get to that later. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find some more videos to follow after this one. So we ended with a GTA. So um, there's something that I like to do in my videos where I try not to stack things back to back if I can help it. So I won't do like five live action things in a row. So I, in this case, I wouldn't do five slow-mo guys in videos in a row, nor would I do five Achievement Hunter videos. I have more Achievement Hunter videos, I think, than I do slow-mo guys videos. So by default, they're gonna stack naturally, but it's gonna be like, two or three Achievement Hunter videos followed by Slow Mo Guys, then two or three Achievement Hunter videos. It'll be stacked a little bit differently. Um, so since I just did an Achievement Hunter video, I might try to find something else that's different. Uh, so I might do a Slow Mo Guys, might do a non Slow Mo Guys that features Gav as Gav from the Slow Mo Guys, um, or I might try to find a different Achievement Hunter video. And also too, because this video was Gavin shooting and it was a GTA I'm gonna try and stay away from putting another GTA back-to-back -back. so I'm gonna try and find something a little bit different 
So I doubt that anyone is actually going to notice this, but the reason that I have paired Yeti Bit My Back back to back with giant weather balloons is because they're both videos where Gavin chokes. I don't think anyone's gonna notice that, but if you do, more points to you. Um, but yeah, so just some more reorganizing. I'm probably gonna be doing this for a while um, just to make sure that I like the order that everything's going in. It's going to flow. I think what I'm going to do maybe is make dinner and let this play in the background while I eat just to see how everything's going together. It's about 840 right now, which means this video will be over around 10. So maybe I'll cut off there for the night, finish some reorganization, got a lot of this stuff done. And then when I get my final organization, then I'll start color coding everything and we can actually get to like editing stuff, which maybe we'll do tomorrow. I also don't know if anyone will notice this, but I put all the breaking back to back. So when Ryan put the thing in Gavin's desk, then when Jeremy broke his desk, then when Gavin shot his monitor on the slow-mo guys, put all those back to back. So I'm gonna save that as is for now. Like I said, I'm gonna run upstairs, make some dinner, come back down and watch. And I think I'll come back on and let you guys know what I've decided. If I have decided, I'll show you guys just quickly real uh, recoloring everything and uh, we'll get back to it. Okay, so it is 10 10 p.m. I have just finished watching the entire thing the whole way through. I'm pretty happy with how it is so far. I uh, stopped to take a few notes and have dinner. So I took a couple notes on some things that I want to fix, just like fixing the title on some of them where maybe I'm not happy with the placement of the title. Um, I marked a couple places where I definitely know that I want to add text, but I didn't focus too much on that because that's going to be stuff that I do tomorrow. So I think to wrap up for the end of the night, what I'll do is I'll go through and readjust on my title so I don't have to worry about that tomorrow. And just because I have a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and recolor everything. So I always start with rows because there's no red in the presets. So I'm just going to click label make it rose and just go ahead and uh, do this really quick. So now that my timeline has been updated, I will save the rest of the stuff for tomorrow. So I'm going to say that 1020, that is the end of today. I did about five hours today, a little bit less than I normally do, but uh, we're about 70% of the way done. We're almost done with this thing. So um, I'm gonna head upstairs, do some stuff and then, uh, check in tomorrow. All right, guys, welcome to day four. Is it day four? I think it's day four. It is almost five o'clock. It's 4.51. I'm going to get started today. Today we are doing fine cuts, which I'm very excited about. So once we finish fine cuts, once we finish all this stuff, then we'll be ready to do the review process, which is probably like my stage three. I'm sure there's other stuff that you're supposed to do, but I usually review. Um, so my review process is basically I watch the video over and I have a rule, which is when I can watch it the full way through without having to stop and fix something, then it's done. Because usually what'll happen is I'll watch it and I'll watch it and I'll see something and I'll pause it, go and edit it, go and fix it then start back over at the beginning, resume, keep going and stuff like that. So when I can watch it the full way through and not either want to make any cuts or not make any cuts is usually when it's finished. And then we'll move on into stage four, which is going to be the exporting and uploading process. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust some of the clips that maybe I had said on day one or day two, like, oh, I'll come back and fix this later when we get to the fine edits and stuff. So I am gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is one thing that I always do in my videos is I always include a fade in and a fade out. So what we're gonna do first is I'm going to include the fade in. The fade out I'm gonna save till the very end because that has to go on the very last clip and I'm still not entirely certain with how I want this to end. I think I have everything, but just in case I don't wanna add it yet, but I know how I want it to start. So we're gonna add some text overlays. We're gonna do some more quick zooms. I'm gonna show you guys what a tracking edit is. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. This is gonna be, this is the fun stuff. This is the real editing on top of the basic tools that I taught you in day one and day two. So the first thing that we're gonna do 
is because I have it starting on a black screen, this was fine when I thought that this clip was gonna go in the middle of my edit. Because what would happen is it would transition over and like it would cut in from a different video and you'd be like, oh, it's Gavin's turn, okay, whatever. But because we're starting with this, I'm assuming that if you click on the video, you know the video is about Gavin. I don't really need to show this. So I'm gonna trim this off and the way we're gonna do that as we're gonna zoom in our timeline. This is also, I don't know if I ever mentioned this and I, I apologize for that because I'm mentioning it kind of late. These are your two tracks. They're separated by this horizontal bar right here. It's basically just to let you know that the V's are all videos, the A's are all audios, everything is linked together. So when I click on one, it highlights your video track and your audio track that you have for that video. Um, to zoom in on these, there is a scroll bar here at the bottom. If you grab one side and pull it closer to shorten it, that will zoom it in. And if you pull it further apart, that will zoom you out. Same thing goes for over here. You have two vertical scroll bars on the side. One is for your audio channels and one is for your video channels. Same thing applies. You pull it in, it gets bigger. You pull it out, it gets smaller. So I'm going to leave mine right there. Keep my audio track nice and big. And so that's how you can zoom in. So I'm going to take, this is called your... Uh, you can call it your headboard or headboard. What's it called? Track head. I'm sorry. This is called your track head. What you can do is you can take this and drag it. And this is called scrubbing what you're doing right here. This motion of pulling this. It's basically you're scrubbing through footage, which means you're taking your track head, dragging it over and kind of quickly going through all of the different frames that are available. Basically what I'm looking for is this right here. All right, are you ready, Gavin? So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to find the place where the audio syncs up and the video syncs up, and I'll explain what I mean. So right here, you have music playing. That's what all this is. This is all music, background music that they put in Linus's video. If I take my uh, arrow keys on my laptop, I can scroll frame by frame. This is where Gavin appears, but if you notice, Gavin is here, but the audio is still fading out which tells me that they had an audio track underneath two separate clips and they faded over. So that's okay. Um, that doesn't really affect me too much because Gavin's not talking, no one's talking. So what I'm gonna do is slide over until I'm clear of this area. I don't wanna be in here. I'm gonna hit my C button and I'm gonna cut, hit V and delete that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the tool that I showed you guys yesterday. This is called the track select forward. It's basically all, it's like when you hit command A on a keyboard and it will auto select everything. That's basically what this does. And I'm gonna move everything forward again up until the zero zero mark. And then I'm gonna hit play and play it back to see how it sounds. Let me turn my volume up so you guys can hear. Hi, right, are you ready? So that's totally fine. So basically, uh, whoever's off camera says, all right, are you ready to Gavin? And he starts talking right here. So I could actually trim this in more, but because we're gonna add a fade, I'm just gonna leave it as is. So here's how you put in a fade. If you come up here to the top to your effects panel, you can come into video effects. There's all sorts of cool stuff in here, but we're gonna go into video transitions. And what we want is we wanna go into the folder that says dissolve and then dip to black is what I always use and I pop it right up at the front, right there. So I make this mistake all the time. I always try to put it kind of in the middle because that's how you do it in Final Cut Pro, or at least that's how I remember doing it from Final Cut Pro. But in Premiere, you have to put it on the video track because this is a video effect. So it won't let you do it if you try to drag it lower. So just make sure that you're keeping it on the video track. And then, so this is what it's gonna look like now. There is a pig flying here. Hi, right, are you ready? So that's the fade in right there. Now, because he starts talking right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shorten the fade, which means I'm going to make this shorter. So if I double click on this, this tells me that this is a one second duration, which I think is what this is, because I think these are what millis milliseconds, I think, and, and minute, and then, yeah. So what I'm gonna do, get rid of that. I don't usually do that. You could do it manually that way if you wanted to, where you could um, double click this and it'll bring up your duration and you could just punch in the keys. Like if you knew you wanted it to be 30 milliseconds, you could just type in 30. I'm not gonna do that, I just eyeball it. If you hover over it, you'll notice that your arrowhead changes into this weird kind of bracket shape. What this is, is it's letting you select it. It's telling you that you are now highlighting this. If you see this bar that I'm moving, this is the effect. I'm just gonna drag it in just a little bit to like maybe right here. This is where the audio starts, so I'm gonna play it and see, because remember, it is a dip to black, which means it is going to fade. So let's see how that looks. Hi, are you ready? So that's not too bad. He starts talking before we really see 
Gavin and that's okay because I think it's really not that jarring it's really quick but I'm gonna shorten it anyway just to see what it looks like even shorter just to see if I like that better hey, are you ready? Mm, I don't know if I like that better I'm probably gonna play it again maybe play with it so usually what I do when I am doing this is I play with the duration of the fade for a little bit just to see what I like better so here it is really short hey, are you ready? hardly even tell. So I'm gonna pull it out a bit because I think I liked it better a little bit longer. Hey, are you ready? Let's see. Do I like that? Hey, are you ready? Yeah. So I don't mind that. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. Why? Yeah. Give me your head. Oh! 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 Okay. So that's really loud. So I'm gonna lower you could actually just adjust the level right in here, but what I do is I just grab it and just lower it. You can see the bar coming down. It'll also say, you know, negative eight, negative 10, 17, whatever. I'm gonna drop it down to negative four and then play it back and see how it sounds. And remember, we're looking over here at the audio level. Okay, so it's still really loud. So I think what I'm gonna do is put it back up to zero and I'm gonna punch in and maybe what I'll do is I'll add some keyframes. Can I do that? So this is the keyframe add slash remove keyframes. I'm gonna put another one right here. We're going to lower this really low. So see it drops it down like this. What we're gonna do is bring this down so that they're not so loud. Hi, yeah. Give me your head. Oh! There we go. So that's gonna keep it a little bit lower. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit and adjust this. And also, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just clicking and dragging and that's just how I'm moving my keyframes. So I'm gonna keep these a little bit lower. Why? Yeah. Give me your head. Oh! oh, 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 oh I was a mile away from you. That was so far away. Oh, uh, there goes the tire. So now that they're talking normally again, what I'm gonna do is add another keyframe and boost them back up just a little bit. So I'll pop a keyframe in right there even though I don't really need it right there. And I'm gonna say right about here, add another one to about there, pop in another keyframe, and I'm gonna grab this and pull this back up a little bit. So let's see how that sounds. Basically what this means I'm doing is this is all kind of bass, bass line, bass line drops here because this is very loud and it blows out the audio. And then I'm gonna raise it back up when they start talking normally again. Why? Yeah. Give me your head. Oh! Okay, so it's a little awkward sounding, so I'm gonna fix that. Basically what I'm trying to do is you're trying to keep it in the green. You don't really want it going up into the yellow if you can stop that, it's called peaking. Um, so I'm gonna fix that a little bit. So let's do, I'm gonna bring Kevin back up maybe here. Hi, yeah. give me your head. Oh! So you can hear Jack coming back up. So maybe what I'll do is do this. So the further I extend it, the longer it has to get back up to the volume, which is kind of like adding a fade into something. Basically what I'm doing by pulling these further apart is if you saw what I did the first time, what I did is I kind of had them like over here. This is a straight drop. It's a vertical line, which means it has, it's just basically going volume is here and then it's here. It's just automatically dropping. What I'm doing by putting it at a slant is I'm saying, oh, the volume is here and now it's down here. It's just sliding down. It's a slide. And that's what I'm doing over here when I raise it back up. I was a mile away from you. That was so far away. So see, that sounds a lot better. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it from back here and we're gonna keep our eyes right over here and watch the audio to make sure that it doesn't kind of go up and down too much. It's okay if it fluctuates because naturally the human voice does fluctuate anyway, especially these guys because there's six of them talking over each other. So it's okay if they're a little wavy, but basically what I'm trying to do is make sure I don't fucking obliterate your eardrums. Oh, oh man, yeah, I assist you could be. Why? Yeah. Give me your head. Oh! So it sounds pretty good to me. I am gonna move this back a little bit because Alfredo is quite loud right here. So I'm gonna see how that sounds. Why? Give me your head. Oh! I was a mile away from 
That was so steady. far away. Oh, there goes the tire. So this is still kind of loud back here, so maybe I'm just going to leave them a little bit lower over here. Ah, so oh, bitch. Bitch. I assist him. Tire's gone. Could be. Why? Yeah. Give me your head. Oh! totally worked out just fine. I'm going to tell you a little secret that we have here in the industry. Basically, when you're editing audio, you always want your levels to be somewhere between negative 12 and negative 18 right here, which is exactly where they were. So we want our audio levels to be in this area where my mouse is. So let's watch. Yep, that's good. That's a little high. It's okay. So see, where I kept it is perfectly normal because it's just out of the range of peaking, so it's not going to be too loud and it's not too quiet for you to hear. I would rather have you guys have lower audio and you have to turn it up on your computer than have it be so loud that it's unwatchable. So what Gavin says here to me is pretty funny, so I'm thinking about adding a text layover. I'm trying to decide if that's actually something that I want to do or not. He says like all I hear is moist and I think that's pretty funny. So I think I'm going to put that in. So I'm going to move this down. What I've just grabbed is this like horizontal bar. Basically it's just going to shift everything down for me. So I'm just going to move it down. So I have this like V2 area open. So this is where he starts talking. So the easiest way that I have found to add a text layover is to just hit the T tool right here and just click. I'm trying to decide where I want to put it. Let's put it right here. So I've clicked right here. It's a little bit slow. So, well, at least it is on my computer. So this is it up here on your timeline. It says graphic, but it also pops up up here. So I'm going to type in all I hear is moist. And then I'm going to leave that there for a second. We're looking at all this. I'm going to lower that my audio so I can see. I'm going to shorten all of these so that I can manually adjust them to the heights that I want them to be instead of adjusting all of them. So there we go. So now I can see that. So all I hear is moist. So what I'm going to do is up here where it says graphics, this has now appeared in your editing, your effects control. So vector motion, don't worry about that. If you hit the little carrot icon, you can move this down so you can see. So this is telling me that my text is currently in the font Minion Pro. I am going to switch over to Comic Sans because that is what I choose to use because it makes me laugh. So I'm going to Command A all of my text. I'm going to come in here, scroll up to the top to Comic Sans, which is my most recent used or whatever because that's the one that I use when I'm editing usually. And then I'm also going to hit the center alignment just because that's a personal preference for me. I just like it better when it's aligned. I'm going to hit my selection tool and then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it over a little bit so that it's actually in the center. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe make this a little bit bigger. So this is your scale right here. This is currently at 164. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can see everything. And then I think what I'll do is come down here to the position. Maybe I'll move this over a little bit to the right. So I'm going to slide this to the right a little bit, even though it's a little bit touchy. So all I hear is moist. That looks good. Lower this a little bit so it's kind of in the center. And then I'll play it back so I can hear it. My headphones back in because all I hear is moist. So then Gavin stops talking right here. So I'm just going to hit the C button, which is the cut, and then delete that so that it only appears when you're hearing it. You do. Well, I guess I helped that guy. You've got to plug my headphones back in because all I hear is moist. So that's what he says right there. Um, let's try this over just a little bit. Back in because all I hear is moist. So all I hear is moist is all he says. It's really that simple. Um, so that's how I align it. I usually try to keep it towards the center or towards the bottom third because that's usually where like down here is usually where the least action happens. You don't usually want to put it up here because there's like this is always up in the corners and stuff. But also too, I put it in the middle just because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, back to what you do. Well, I guess I helped that guy. Gotta plug my headphones back in because all I hear is moist. 
So I'm just gonna leave that as, I also personally like to do the all lowercase. If you've noticed that most of my titles, I think it's actually all of my titles for all of my Achievement Hunter videos are all in lowercase. And I generally type in all lowercase. Um, when I respond to comments and stuff, I type usually, usually using proper grammar etiquette and stuff like that. Sometimes I capitalize and stuff. It just depends. But for me, I just like the aesthetic look of things that are all lowercase. I have a tattoo that's all lowercase. So it's just something that I like to do. So then I'm going to highlight these two and I'm going to group them together so that they move together if I ever do decide to move them. And I think that's the only thing from this video that I wanted to add like any characteristics to. So we'll keep going. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding two text layers to this one clip. Um, and I decided here that I would add what's called a stroke on top of my text layer just because it's hard to see white on a white background and I almost always do white text. So I made it red because it stands out a little bit more. It's a little bit easier to read. So I'm going to do the same thing over here show you guys how I did it. So that's what they called Matt in high school. I'm going to select it so I can see it. Down here, this is my text layer. This is where it says Comic Sans. It's 205. It's centered. This is the fill. It's white. I'm going to click for the stroke and I'm going to make it red so you can kind of see it i'm just going to boost this up to 10 because that's what the other one is and now it has the lines around it really really easy not really much you have to do welcome back i am here to show you how to do a tracking shot so i did two separate tracking shots in the jenga video so here i'm going to show you how here are all my keyframes up here i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven uh, I have 21. I have 21 keyframes, which is a fair bit. Bear with me. So basically what I did here is let me show you. So I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. I should zoom in up here actually. Um, okay. So right about here, we have our first connection. So like I said before, you put two keyframes up at the front to make it so that you're not zooming in at the start of the video basically from point a to point b which is your first keyframe and your second keyframe that's where your actual zoom occurs like i said earlier so i have my first keyframe my zoom punches in on gavin who's drinking which is totally fine but the thing is because gavin is being shocked he's moving around a lot so he's kind of bouncing in and out of the frame so what i did is i tracked him so let me show you how i did that so gavin stays right here for a little bit he stays right about in this area he doesn't really move a whole lot which is totally fine but then when the shocks start getting harder and he starts laughing he kind of starts wobbling and that's where i have to follow him so he's okay right here here where this next keyframe is this is keyframe c and d where these two are gavin starts to lower a little bit like he hunches a little bit because he's laughing and he's trying to keep himself stable so he bends down a little bit so what i did is i lowered the keyframe so it may not look it because he's framed up the same but if you watch over here where my position is my position and my scale these are your x and y coordinates x is always on the left y is always on the right y is of course your vertical x is your horizontal my y coordinates will change even though um, my scale doesn't change my scale doesn't change once throughout this entire video but my x and y coordinates do so watch my x and y coordinates you can see them moving here because from here it's steadily moving downwards because I know that Gavin is eventually going to bend. So you can see his headroom disappearing a little bit. Because if you look here, he's got a little bit of headroom, maybe about a finger's worth of headroom. But then when I get over here, he doesn't have a whole lot. But it's because he ducks his head. So you can see right here, I'm kind of cutting off the top of his head. But that's because I know here he's going to be down here and um, give him more headroom again. So I know that Gavin's moving, so you can see my X and Y coordinates are changing here because I know that he's bouncing up and down. So at the beginning of the video, right over here, I'm at 15.56, and over here I'm at uh, 12.62, so I dropped down 300 degrees on my X, Y coordinate um, just so I could keep him in frame. So then here, he bounces over to the side a little bit. So I tracked him down again, so you can see my X, Y coordinates changing again. Now we're down to 1082, so I've dropped down 500 from the start. So you can see him kind of, he bends over, then he stands up, and then he kind of leans to the side. So what I did is I made the camera go down, up, and then to the side to follow him. So from here, you can see my keyframe is at 13, then over here it's 12, then all the way down to 980, then back up, all while keeping him perfectly in frame until I zoom out. So this is what it looks like played through. <laughs> so 
So you can see the way it kind of goes up and down to follow his natural movements. I think I'm actually gonna add in a couple more keyframes because I noticed there are certain points where he's kind of off to the side. And um, I'm gonna do my best to fix that. So here, I'll let you guys see what I'm doing. I'm punching a little bit so I can get closer. So here he's kind of off to the side a little bit. So right here is where he's stepping. So right in this area is where he's taking a step. So I'm gonna put a keyframe there. I don't really need to add one, but I do just anyway. I don't really need to add a scale one. So this one, he's moved over a little bit. So that would be this one. So I'm gonna move him over to the right a little bit, or actually I'm gonna move over to the left. So, so he's still over to the left a little bit. So I'll add another one. Slide that one over a little bit. I don't, know, I don't need one there, but I will. So here. a little bit more and get a little bit closer. Okay, why is my scroll bar being so weird? It's right about here. I'm gonna lift him up a little bit because he's kind of There we go. That's a little bit easier. It's a little bit smoother. So that's a little high. So I can drop him a little bit. He's a little bit high up right there. So he's still kind of high over here, but he's because he's um, okay. So here, let's play that back. Let's see how that looks. Let's zoom out right here. So now here's how it looks like this. Let's zoom this out a little bit. As you can see, I have a lot more keyframes than I did when I started, but hopefully it works out okay. So let's see. I'll try and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see all the keyframes, but. Yeah, that's how you do a tracking shot. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Um, so like I said, remember, it's just adjusting your X and Y coordinates to keep your target in frame. What you can do is just take these, if you click on them and just drag with your mouse while you hold down the click, it'll adjust it and you can just watch it from over here. So like if I do this, you can see it, I'm wiggling my mouse. You can see my hand, I'm wiggling my mouse. Um, so you can do that. I'm gonna get rid of that keyframe because I don't need that. But yeah, so that's how you do a tracking shot. I hope that that makes some sort of sense. Okay, so the video has finally run its course, which means I can add the finishing touches right now. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the last clip that I have, Gavin running through glass, because it is one of my favorite Gavin moments because he's so confident. He broke the sugar glass. He was totally fine, Evan. Everything that was supposed to go right does not go right and he just full stop Smashes into a wall of glass. It is hysterical. It makes me laugh So I'm gonna keep it at the end because it's one of my favorite moments So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some fades on this. So What we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a dip to black up here and then up in the audio transitions where it says crossfades, the only folder I have, I am going to do an exponential fade. And then I'm gonna play it through and listen to it and adjust accordingly, like I did at the beginning. Hello. So I think what I'll do, I'm gonna pull the fade out a little bit longer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the fade out a little bit longer because since this is the end of the video, this means my outro is gonna come in. So I'm gonna keep it faded out a little bit further. Let me listen here. Um, 
gonna bring the dip to black out a little bit further. Yep, that's better. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up this bin, which has just got my, it's got nothing in it right now. I'm gonna hop over here. I double clicked in here. So to import, you can hit Command I, you can double click or you can go File, Import. So I just double clicked. I'm going to hop into my Achievement Hunter projects. I will go to my outro. I will take my outro card and my music, import those both. Then I will drag them both onto my timeline and close the bin. Um, okay, that's not what I wanted. Uh, so let me zoom out so I can see where the music is. So the music I'm going to pop on the second track, which is A2, this one right here. I'm gonna pop the music down there because I'm gonna layer them. So I am going to lower the music down, I always do. And I'm gonna pull this down here. I also add a fade into the music as well. So while the video is fading out, the music is fading in. So they cross and then the music can take over. I'm gonna drag my outro card a little bit longer. So it's gonna sync up there because I got my thing on. We will grab a constant power or constant gain. Either one is totally fine. Let me zoom in so I can see. So let me do that. Say so match up. So let's see how this sounds. That's cool, isn't it? The metric. So then I'll put a fade on this and then I will hop over into the video transitions and I will do a dip to black here as well as a dip to black here. There we go. So when I added the dip to black here, you could kind of see it get rid of the one here. That's totally fine. It's basically saying like, you should put a cross dissolve here because I'm crossing between two videos, but I don't want to do that because I don't want them to overlay. Sometimes what I do is to get rid of the cross dissolve effect, I'll just put a simple black screen, like a picture of a black screen in between two clips for like a millisecond so that it fades into the black and then the black fades into that. I don't really need to do that because that worked just fine. So now we're getting to the final stage. We are about 90% of the way done right now, uh, which is kind of crazy because we're only technically on day four of editing. But if you look down here, we're technically on day eight because I started working on June 2nd and it's now July, June 24th. Um, but that was just research and stuff. Um, I work off of a schedule usually where I do research, what I call research, which is basically just me watching the videos that period of time where I spend 12 hours a day watching Achievement Hunter videos is my research day basically. And I'll take about a week to do research on videos where I'll say, I will watch every Slow Mo Guys video to find moments of the ones I want. I'll mark down timestamps, I'll take notes. Then I'll watch 400 Achievement Hunter videos and figure out it's not really that much. It feels like that much, but it's not. I'll watch X amount of Achievement Hunter videos or whatever, make all my notes and stuff. And then I do a week of editing usually where I'll do stuff like this, where I'll go through my rough cut, my fine cut, get all this stuff done, then I'll move into my exporting and stuff, and then I upload. So that whole process can take, like I usually, like I say, I usually do about a week of research, at least a week of editing, and then sometimes if I have longer videos, like the TTT videos took me a little bit longer, like especially the Accurately Guessing the Traders, I think I did review on that video for like a week. That's kind of the schedule that I work off of. It usually takes me, like, if I had to estimate, I'd say about three weeks to make a video with including my research, fine cuts, or rough cuts, I should say, and then my fine cuts, and then uploading all that stuff. So now what I'm gonna show you guys is the next stage. We are officially on stage three, which is the review process. It's currently nine o'clock, so I've been at this for a couple hours. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna render everything. And this is arguably one of the worst parts about editing. You know what, someone asked me what the worst part about ed editing was, this is. Rendering. Rendering is the worst part of editing. So in order to render, what I do is I set in and out points. So to set in and out points, it's really easy. You hit I and then you hit O. And that's how you make a in and out point. So I, O. So I'm gonna clear this. So I'm gonna hit control, click, and then clear in and out because that's not what I want. So what I could do is go all the way to zero, zero and hit I. What I'm going to do is go all the way out here to where I have a black screen and just hit O because it's gonna make the whole thing an in and out point. And so now what I could do 
is go up here to file no sequence what I want to do is go up to sequence and then render into out I'm not gonna do that because this video is an hour long and rendering is probably apart from exporting and uploading it is the longest part so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render in increments I'm gonna render five minutes at a time let's say so I'll start here we'll start here and I will go we'll go to five minutes five minutes zero zero there's five minutes I'm gonna hit O. this is now a five minute period and I'm just gonna render this and we'll see how long it takes So render into out and over here it's rendering now granted this video is not gonna take three hours hopefully to render because it's only an hour long the longer the video obviously the more it takes to render the more captions you have the more cuts you have the more shit you put in your video the harder it's gonna be to render then once that's done I'm gonna export and I'm gonna tell you now I'm gonna start exporting tomorrow and I think I might be able to get this video up by Friday I always upload on a Friday but I'm going to California next Tuesday and I was thinking that if I posted the video on Tuesday um, I would have until the week after before I start because I take a break off so I always upload on a Friday and I don't start the next video until the following Friday I always take a week off in between my videos so I haven't told everyone yet but I'm thinking of trying to get this up by Friday I don't know if I will because in the past I've announced like hey new video is gonna be up in a couple days blah 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 I've posted on reddit and stuff um, but I think what I might do is I think I might just post it as a surprise. I will check back in once this is done rendering and let you guys know because usually once I've rendered it piece by piece I do a full render because it remembers like you can see right here the bar is yellow the yellow signifies that it has not rendered the green signifies that it has once this is done theoretically it should all be green so when I hit render it should only take like three seconds because it's basically scrubbing it frame by frame and rendering everything frame by frame that's why it takes so long um, so once that's done I'll do a full render and then I will check back in with you guys all right so it is 10:05. my video has just finished rendering I did a full render and I did the five minute segments it is finally done so now what I'm going to do is uh, everything has been saved I'm gonna save it one more time because you can never save too many times um, now that everything is saved, I am going to call it here for tonight. So yeah, tomorrow uh, is fun stuff. We're about 95% of the way done, which is great. I'm really happy with the progress we've made. Um, so yeah, I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Uh, I am going to watch this a few more times and uh, we'll see what we need to do tomorrow. There might be some more stuff that we have to fix, but for the most part, everything right now is good to go okay everyone welcome officially to day five today should hopefully be the final day uh, of editing slow-mo guys gavin versus achievement hunter gavin it's just after six i've actually been working on this for a couple hours i've been reviewing i meant to review uh last night and then didn't uh so i started reviewing today i've made a couple more cuts um i haven't added anything i've taken a few things out um, I've just trimmed some clips down a little bit further. I've, you know, smoothed some audio problems out that I heard. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through it again, watch it one more time by myself just to see how everything's going. And uh, I think we might be able to get exporting today, which is really good. That's my only goal for today is to, to get this exported and then possibly get it uploaded. So in the off chance that I'm able to upload this tonight and you're seeing this on, well, you wouldn't be seeing this video, but you're seeing Achievement Hunter Gavin come up on Friday. It would be Friday the 26th. So if I get to exporting today, I'll show you guys how I export um, because I export into a different file than I think some people do. I download into an H.264 where most people might do an MOV or an MP4. I do H.264. Um, so I'll show you guys that. I'll show you all the settings that you should have up that are correct. I'll show you how to check everything, change the file name, where to save it to, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you guys all that stuff and then hopefully I should be able to show you guys how to upload I actually got this done a lot quicker than I was expecting this is probably one of the fastest projects I've ever worked on and I'm really happy about that because you know it's it's decent I just hope that the the quality of the video stands up even though the work time was a little bit shorter I mean yeah I still spent over 20 something hours working on it and I will spend more probably closer to 30 on it today so it's 30 hours in a week to work on a video it's really not that bad um, it's like a part-time job <laughs> pretty much I mean when I worked at Disney I worked 33 hours a week so and I worked like anywhere from six to eight hour shifts like four or five days a week so 
Um, it's kind of the same as me working at Disney, so it's really not that big of a deal. So I will check back in with you guys soon, probably within the next hour and a half or so, because the video is currently sitting at an hour and 10 minutes. So it's 70 minutes long. So you figure if I do have to stop, it'll probably take me another extra five, 10 minutes, depending on what I need to fix. Um, so I will check back in with you guys around 7.30. All right, guys, it is officially 7.42. So right about the time that I said I was gonna be coming in, I went and had dinner, watched the video a few more times, and uh, I think it's done. So I think we're gonna export today. I'm very excited. I have just re-rendered the whole thing again, so I just force a habit, I just render everything right before I export it just to make sure that everything is nice and good, nice and clean. Um, I listened to it the whole way through. I didn't hear any audio clips. I didn't see any like weird clipping or any splicing in the video. Looked fine. I was happy with all of the content that was in there. Hopefully it makes you guys laugh. I hope you guys do enjoy it. So I am going to show you how I export. So what you have to do is when you have your whole thing, after you've rendered everything and you should know when it's rendered because your timeline will be highlighted, there's gonna be a green bar right here. That's this bar right here. That's gonna tell you that everything is completely rendered. And just to make sure you can come up to sequence, render into out one more time, it's gonna automatically start. It's not even gonna give you the option to render anymore because it's already good. I'm gonna do a render effects into out too. It's already done. Everything is good. And hit save one more time, just because why not? So you'll come up here to file, export, and then export media. So then it's gonna open this. This is your export settings menu. So there's a whole bunch of shit in here. So I'm gonna tell you pretty much what this is saying. So up here, this is the format that you're going to be exporting your video in. Now, if you drop down into your menu, there's tons of options in here that you can choose from. There's a TIFF form, there's a QuickTime. So I'm gonna explain what these are. These are all different forms that you can export your video in. So certain systems, depending on which version of Premiere Pro you have, how many setups you have, you're gonna have more options. So sometimes you'll have like an MP3 option, like you have the option for JPEG and MP3 and MPEG2 and Blu-ray and MOV. Some of these, like depending on what your setup is, some of these will have MOV, uh, like WAV, which is a waveform for audio usually. There's all sorts of different dot whatevers that you can have. The one that I use is this one, which is H.264. This is the setting that I always use, and I will explain why. So H.264 is the most widely used codec on the planet. So what this means is that YouTube, when you upload a video, has to be in a specific form. It's the same way whenever you upload any type of media to any sort of server or browser. It's like when you're uploading an assignment for school, it has to be in a DOC form, which is a document, or maybe a PDF form, or something like that. It, it has to be one specific thing. YouTube has multiple options that you can upload in, but H.264 is one of them, and that's why I always do it. You can also do MOV, you can do MP3, I think you can do MP4 as well. MP3 is just audio, MP4 is audio and video. Um, but I use H.264, it's what I used when I was in college, and it's what I prefer to use anyway. Just pretty easy, just normal stuff. So that's why I use H.264. So your preset, I never touch this, so I leave mine at high bitrate. It's just what I leave mine as. I don't leave a, a comments or anything. The output name is the, the name that it's gonna save as, is your video. So I labeled my timeline, the thing, the rainbow thing that I was working on. I labeled my timeline as sequence because it showed up in my bin as a sequence and I just wanted to make sure I knew what it was. So I'm gonna click on this. If you click on it once, it'll bring it up here and it's basically telling you I am going to save to your documents on the iCloud. I am going to change that and save it to my desktop. So I'm just gonna pick my, oh wait, it's already on my desktop. <laughs> I lied. I'm going to change the name of this to Gavin just because I know that this is my Gavin video. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to save to my Gavin video. It says export video and export audio. If I uncheck this, it will not export my audio. So I'm going to make sure that that is checked. So now it's gonna have my audio. So this is telling me it's going to output, which means this is where it's going to put the file when it's done exporting in users Ali Kitaguchi desktop Gavin MP4. So it basically means it's gonna put it on my desktop under the name Gavin, um, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. The source is the sequence, which is what I was just working on. There's different settings down here that you can look at, what your frame rate's gonna be, like what your performance is. I never touch any of these because my presets are totally fine. And I think I've never adjusted these usually. Um, sometimes I take a look at them just to make sure that they're fine, but it's depending on 
you know, what you're, you want it always to come out in stereo. You don't want it to be like left or right or mono. Mono is one, stereo is two, that type of thing. I never touch these, just leave them as they are. Down here, time interpolation, frame sampling, that's the same thing. You can queue it up or you can just hit export. I am just gonna hit export and off it goes. And that is going to take several hours. That's not gonna take several hours. It says it's going to take 51 minutes and 53 seconds to encode my sequence, which is going to download it. Um, so when this is done downloading, I'll check back in and show you guys what happens afterwards because afterwards, oh, see now it's already up to 56 minutes. This will probably take almost two hours to download, which means that around 10 o'clock, it'll probably be done. Um, which I will have to call it here for tonight. This is supposed to be a surprise video because I haven't told anyone that I'm planning on trying to upload it tomorrow. So if it doesn't go up, it's not the end of the world because you guys wouldn't have known until you saw this video anyway. But you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So it says it's got an hour and 15 minutes left, which is gonna put me just after nine, I think. Yeah, it's gonna put me just after 9 p.m. It's almost eight. So I'm gonna let that download and we're gonna see what happens. All right, guys, welcome back. It is nine o'clock right on the dot, pretty much. My watch will turn on to 8.59. My video has just finished encoding, which means it's done. It's on my desktop. Um, so after your video finishes encoding, once it's done, it drops you back into your timeline. Um, just to let you see, I'm gonna hit save one more time, even though there's not really anything else to save because nothing changed. You can exit out of your project. Here is my video right here. So I am going to pop this into my folder. This is my hard drive. I just leave it open on my desktop at all times just because I constantly am pulling things from in there and out of there. So I'm gonna have it open. I'm gonna put my video in there. It's currently popping in and then I'm gonna delete it off my desktop just to make sure there's plenty of space on my desktop. But now that I'm done doing that, what I can do is I can move all of my auto saves into this folder. You could just delete them if you're not planning on um, adjusting your video anymore. So the reason that I keep all of the auto saves uh, is because I know that for me as an editor, sometimes it's nice to go back into my old projects and be like, oh, well, I had this one at this X, Y coordinate or the audio for this clip was at this and I'm repeating that. I, I know that this audio level worked. So it's nice to go back in and be able to open my projects and see everything. But when you delete the auto saves, it deletes all the render files, which means you'll have to re-render everything and all sorts of stuff. So it's just easier to keep everything in one place. So I just keep it all on my hard drive. And like I said, I have a terabyte, so I have a ton of space. Um, so I'm able to do that uh, as of right now. So I'm gonna put all of those in there. My video just dropped in, which is great because it means I can delete it off my desktop and then I'm gonna clean out my trash can in uh, my computer so all of my files aren't like massive. Okay, so to make the thumbnails, there's a couple different things that you can do. There's all sorts of different templates that you can use, which is what I use. Um, I use a website um, to make templates. Same thing with my end screen. That's also a template that I've used from a different website. You could also make it in Photoshop. Sometimes people will take a picture or something and make that their thumbnail. Um, it's totally dependent on you. It's personal preference. I like to use some kind of formula just because I think aesthetically it looks a little bit nicer. Um, so I'm gonna hop over into Chrome and I'm going to come up to this website called Canva. So Canva is a template website where you can get different types of social media posts and stuff. So they have different templates for business, marketing, education, personal stuff. I'm going to go into all of my designs and hop over into this one right here because this is the one that I use. Now what I can do, this is my uploads folder. So these are all the images that I have considered using for um, different Achievement Hunter projects and stuff. So I'm gonna upload some images that I have already picked out. They're on my hard drive. They are in my Gavin project, which should be these three right here. So I'm gonna upload these and then I'm gonna play around with them and see which one I like best. So these are screenshots that I've taken from uh, three different slow-mo, or well, two different slow-mo guys videos. There's this one, which I like. I think it's cute. Gavin is adorable. Um, there's this one, which I also think is pretty funny. You can adjust them, move them. I'm actually gonna put that back. You can do this. So to be able to move it without actually adjusting like where the picture is, you have to double click on it and it'll give you this and you can hit done. So I would probably do this type of justification so you get his hands and his shoulders in. So I could do something like that. Or I could do, okay, again, Allison, you know better. 
or I could do this picture, which is also one of my favorites. Um, so I might do this one just because it's really funny. So then I'm just gonna change my text. This is just, I think this was the font that came with this template. I can't remember if it was or not. Um, it's Playfair Display, I think. Yeah, that's what it says, it's Playfair. Um, I could change the font. I think it's easy to read. I always type in lowercase. So now I have to decide what the title of the video is gonna be. I don't ever decide what the title of the video is gonna be until I upload it, so I don't actually know what I'm gonna call it. Because if you've noticed on my channel, all of my videos are timed. So it's like 69 minutes of, two hours of, or whatever. So I could make this like one hour of Slow Mo Guys Gavin versus Achievement Hunter Gavin, or I could just name it like Slow Mo Guys Gavin versus Achievement Hunter Gavin. I don't really know. I haven't really decided what I want to call this yet. My original pitch was like the dichotomy of Gavin Free, but I don't think a lot of people know what the word dichotomy means. So I might not do that. I might do that. So Gavin from Achievement Hunter versus Gavin from the Slow Mo Guys. Okay, so my camera decided it was full, even though it was not full. Um, so uh, basically I decided that that was gonna be the title of the video. I downloaded my thumbnail. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to sneakily upload this to YouTube and uh, hope it doesn't get a copyright strike. So I'm gonna go upstairs, I'm going to upload this to YouTube and uh, you guys will see me from tomorrow or another day or something. Uh, checking in to let you guys know how I do my uploading stuff. Um, so yeah. To upload a video, you simply head up to the create button up at the top. And when you hit create, I usually just hit upload video, select files, hop into my folder, pull out my gavin.mp4 video, and then I upload it. So this is the upload page. If you've never uploaded something to YouTube before, you probably would have never seen this. You title the video, you can add a description, and there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do in this particular window while you're uploading. Um, so here's where you upload your thumbnail. So I'm gonna pull my thumbnail that I had saved. I saved it as a JPEG, upload it there. So now that's my official thumbnail. Um, I'm going to add mine to a playlist that I've created. So I have an Achievement Hunter playlist that I create, and then I also have a playlist for my channel that's specifically my video. So it's called like Countless Minutes of Achievement Hunter. Um, no, this video is not made for kids, very clearly. Um, there's no paid promotion, so I don't really have to do anything there. To add tags, this is something that a lot of people don't do, but I choose to do it. So I'm gonna add like Gavin, Gavin Free, Achievement Hunter, um, and stuff like that. Basically things that like, they're like keywords. So if someone were to type in the search bar, slow-mo guys, they should be able to find my video, which you can do. Um, and yes, I do this for all of my videos. All of my videos are tagged with certain tags in this element. Um, video language is English. I don't have closed captioning because I don't make the captions, but I always select the video being in English. Um, categories gaming, I usually leave that. Um, the hold comments, I don't really hold anything. It automatically defaults to hold potentially inappropriate comments and I just left that as is. And then when I get a comment that's been held for review, I just check it later. Um, so here is where you schedule it. So I hit part of it, but I meant to hit schedule. So I'm gonna schedule it for June 26th at 12 p.m. because I always upload at noon because I think Achievement Hunter videos come out around nine in the morning or maybe they did, I don't know. For some reason I have it in my head that they come out at nine, they might not, but I always set it for noon um, because that's a time where uh, I usually wake up so I can usually check the comments and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna schedule it, hop back over to details. So here's kind of where I'm working on my description. Now my description always changes per video um, I usually try to put something kind of funny up at the front. So for this one, surprise, here's a new video just for you guys because I usually let people know when I'm gonna post a video, but this time I didn't. Um, so I'm just typing out my captions for the description. And then in my description, I always include the videos that I used, like links to the all of the original videos that I used. I always include a disclaimer that all of the content belongs to Achievement Hunter and not to me. And I also usually like to do a like secret thing where it's like, if you read the description, comment this, um, which was kind of the first time I ever did it. I kind of did it just to see who would do it. And uh, uh, more people did it than I expected them to. So I've been doing it for the last couple videos. So if you hop into the description bar for the last like two or three videos, you'll see like a, if you read this comment blank or 
thing or whatever. So I like to do those too. And so now what I have to do is I have to pull all of the links from all of the original videos. So what I'm going to do is hop over into a separate tab in YouTube, type in the titles of the videos, copy the URLs and post them in. I usually use the notes folder on my phone, post it in there first, then uh, command all, all of them, copy them and then paste them into the description. I also, when I do it too, I always paste them in order. So in order that they appear in the video. So the first one would be that Linus video and then the second one would be the GTA video. So then once the video is done uploading, once it's done processing, um, I'm able to hit the next button because now that it's done and I can come over to this section called video elements. And this is where I add stuff that goes in the end screen which is stuff uh, like the links to the other videos and stuff like that. So I kind of mentioned it when I was making my thumbnail, but I use an outro card that I've been using since like the second or third video, I think that I made a while ago. And so since that's at the end of the video, there's a pre-select tool that you can hit that has two videos and it's in the same location where the black squares appear in my outro video. So I just line them up and then I can adjust them using the like brown and blue bar that you see. Those are like the video managers or whatever. So I just adjust those until I get them like in the actual squares that are like delegated for it in the outro card. Um, so once I have those in there, I can adjust which videos I pick. I usually try to pick like the most recent and like maybe like my least viewed or something that I think would be interesting. So like I think when I did the second Gmod video, I think I linked the um, the Gmod video that had come before that, like the other TTT video that I had done, and then I also linked, I think, my most recent video. So that one will update as more videos and stuff come out. Um, I also wanted to show you guys that I am ineligible for monetization, uh, just to prove to you guys, for those of you who need proof that I don't make any money off of these videos. Because they're copyrighted, they basically say, hey, you have a copyright claim. It's not a copyright strike, which means that your video is still able to be viewed. People can still watch it, but the content creators that you have stolen footage from can choose to put ads on your videos, which they do. Um, so I can't make any money off of these, just for those of you who were wondering. And so now my video is completely uploaded. And the next thing that I have to do is make timestamps. Um, I always make timestamps for everybody, so what I do is uh, I skim through the video on my own after it's been uh, scheduled and I mark down all the timestamps and then I save them in like a notes document because you can't post comments to a scheduled video, it has to be like completely uploaded. And then when I, usually when I wake up the next morning, I uh, upload the comments. Hi, hello, welcome to the end of this seemingly never ending process. Today is July 27th. I started this video on June 2nd, technically. Um, it's done, finally. <laughs> um, so it's been a couple days. I have pretty much finished editing the behind the scenes video, the video that you're watching. I've pretty much finished editing it. And then I realized I never filmed an intro or an outro. And I said, oh shit, I should probably film that. So then I went and filmed the intro, and then filmed a Q&A, uh, refilmed the Q&A actually, because I had already filmed it twice, and then filmed it again for a third time. And then I started editing and I said, oh shit, I didn't film an outro. So uh, here I am a few days later with an outro. I don't know how well I was able to articulate what I was doing. I hope that my process makes sense to those of you who are here for editing techniques. And I hope that for those of you who are here for the actual behind the scenes stuff, I hope that you're happy or interested or surprised by either the amount of work that goes into these videos or what I do or the type of process that I go through. I hope this video was at least interesting because it would be such a shame to make a two hour video and then have it not be interesting at all. But uh, yeah, it's completely done. Um, I've officially hit 10,000 subscribers. When I filmed the intro, I hadn't hit 10,000 subscribers yet. Yeah, so when I filmed the intro for this video with me in the floral yellow shirt, um, I hadn't even started editing the most recent video, which is Achievement Hunter Destroying Their Office. I hadn't even started editing that yet. And in the time between filming that intro, I edited that entire video together, finished it, uploaded it, and then hit 10,000 subscribers. So it's been a few days. It's been like almost a week, I think, actually. But 
Um, yeah, so I've officially hit 10,000 subscribers. I think as of today, the day that I'm filming, I think I'm at 10,300 something, which is really, really cool. Um, you might have noticed I have a new intro card, like the, uh, the graphic uh, that says my name, and I also have a new header on YouTube. I did all that stuff last night. Um, I think those are going to be appearing in my videos now just as like a, hey, you're watching an Ali Kitaguchi video. This is kind of like my branding, if you will. Um, so yeah, I uh, don't really know what to say for an outro. I do hope that this video was interesting. I hope that you guys are interested in seeing more videos like this because I had a ton of fun making this video and I would love to do more. Um, if you were here for editing techniques and I either didn't explain them super well or if you were more interested in seeing more stuff like maybe focusing more heavily on audio or focusing on tracking shots or something like that, um, just let me know and I would be more than happy to sit down and show you guys like how to do them. My dad suggested that maybe one video I could do was show you the difference between two kind of Premiere software, so using Adobe Premiere then using Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Pro X to show you the difference between the softwares and how you can learn to apply techniques that you use in one software versus techniques that you use in another software. Um, so anything like that I'd be super interested in. Um, I do have a Q&A video coming out very soon. Um, so for those of you who have sent in questions that I either haven't answered or have just like liked the comment or something, I will be getting to those very soon. I think I answer like 30 questions or something like that in that video. Um, that video should be coming out, uh, say like next week from when you're watching this one. I don't want to put them too close together because I don't want to like flood people. I just released a video on Friday. Today is Monday. So I just released four days ago and then I'm probably not going to get this video up till Wednesday. Today's Monday. Um, so I'm probably not going to get this video up until Wednesday. It might be up on Tuesday, but I am not confident. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, Q&A video is going to be coming out very soon. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing a behind the scenes series. So for every video that people request, like maybe doing another Q&A in a couple months or maybe doing um, another video kind of like this, like a behind the scenes video or something like that, it's going to have a different thumbnail so you guys can differentiate between the Achievement Hunter content, which is that black and white bordered one versus this one, which you've seen the thumbnail for already, which is kind of more playful. It's got my face on it so that you know that I'm in this video as opposed to this video is a strictly about Achievement Hunter like the Achievement Hunter ones are. Um, so I think I'll make a playlist titled Behind the Scenes. So if you guys do want to watch behind the scenes content that features me or features my process, you guys can watch those instead. Um, so I'll have all that stuff up on my channel, I'll get working on that. Um, but yeah, this is a really long winded way of saying thank you guys. I really hope that those of you who were able to sit down and watch this whole thing or even listen to it, I hope that you're finished your chores or your homework or you made dinner or lunch or whatever you've been doing during the duration of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it working. If you're working, I hope you did work. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you guys so much again for watching and I will see you in the Q&A next week. Thank you.